You probably have had pot pie before, but have you ever had a curry pot pie? This curry chicken pot pie is so well balanced and exciting. It's a nice twist from the traditional heavier pot pie, and it uses cauliflower instead of potato. It's topped with a flaky pie crust and no bottom, but trust me, that's all you need. And you can use your leftover chicken or even Thanksgiving turkey. So if you wanna make this savory and satisfying curry chicken pot pie, then keep on watching. What's up universe? It's Julie, your kitchen coach, and welcome back to our channel. And in case you're new, I'm a trained chef who's passionate about helping home cooks gain confidence in the kitchen. And that's why I wanted to tackle something that's kind of familiar, but add a little twist, like this curry chicken pot pie. We're gonna start off with some cauliflower, which I hinted at before, which is a little bit lighter than adding like bits of potato or something like that in there. And I'm gonna go for some chunks, like little bite-sized pieces. You can add the stems. I'm not gonna break it down too much. Like I don't want it to be super crumbly. We're gonna go for about two cups worth. Cauliflower not only lightens up this dish a little bit, but it also is really complementary to curry flavor. I like to do my mise en place, meaning you do all your chopping in advance. Don't mind my messy board, I'm just gonna chop right on top of it. I'm gonna go for about a small to medium onion, diced. And it's okay to add it to the same plate. And then my favorite part, <laughs> you guys know, it's really not, I hate mincing garlic. I don't know what it is. Three cloves of garlic, minced. Almost done. And then we're gonna get some cooked chicken. I have rotisserie chicken. And if you wanna use leftover turkey, you can just use that. And we're gonna go for about one and a half cups shredded. And this is what I like about this recipe. It's because I'm putting this out around the holidays time. So like if you do have leftover ingredients from Thanksgiving per se, this is perfect. Because I love that the curry flavor adds a little bit of excitement from traditional Thanksgiving flavors and you can use leftover heavy cream, leftover pie crust. And if you're not watching this around Thanksgiving time, then this is a great recipe to make anytime. Actually, this pie should probably feed about three to four people, but Joe and I ate the whole thing on our own. <laughs> Throw it back in here, one and a half. And that's it, I'm gonna wash my chickeny hands and I'll meet you at the stove. I have two tablespoons of unsalted butter. Is it just me or do you love the sight of butter melting in the pan? I'm using my nonstick pan and it's over about medium high heat. I'm gonna add in my onions only. Give them a head start. We're gonna let these soften maybe about four minutes or so just until they are translucent and softened. It might take you about anywhere between three to five minutes. Meanwhile, can we just talk about my cute little pie plate? I would recommend a, at least a nine inch pie plate. I'm actually not sure how big this is, but any pie plate should work as long as it is oven safe. And if you don't have a pie plate, you can always make this in a cast iron skillet and then just continue on the recipe in there. Your nose knows when it's ready. So I think we're ready to add the garlic. So here goes the three cloves of garlic. You always add garlic a little bit later because you don't want it to burn and we're gonna also bloom our spices. So I have a teaspoon of curry powder. So this is just regular standard curry powder that you find like in the spice aisle. So we're gonna add a teaspoon of that, as well as I'm gonna start with a half teaspoon of kosher salt. I may end up having to season a little more, so it's about half teaspoon of kosher salt or more to taste. So when you bloom or toast your spices in oil, it really just enhances the fragrance, kind of like wakes it up. We're just cooking this for about a minute, then we're gonna add in our chopped cauliflower. So once again, this is our two cups. We're gonna add one cup of frozen peas and carrots. They sell this in the frozen section. So it's literally just peas and carrots mixed in. It's not the mixed vegetable bag, but if that's all you can find, you know, that includes the green beans and such, then you can just buy that too. I'm just gonna coat them in the curry oil. Then I'm gonna add in flour. I have a quarter cup of all-purpose flour, and you know, there's butter in there, so essentially what we're doing is we're making a roux, but with the vegetables inside. That's what's gonna thicken this whole thing up. 
I always like to just cook out the rawness of flour when making a roux, so I'm just gonna make sure that it's all coated. Then we're gonna deglaze the pan with two cups of low sodium chicken broth. If you don't have low sodium, then I highly recommend maybe diluting your regular chicken broth because you wanna be able to control the amount of salt in your overall dish. If you just use regular chicken broth only, you might wanna taper down your salt that you added in the beginning too. I have a third of a cup of heavy cream, but the reason there's a tablespoon in here is because I wanna remind myself to pull out a tablespoon's worth to keep this on the side for the end. So from that third of a cup of heavy cream, you're gonna take out one tablespoon and just pour whatever else is remaining in here. Now what this tablespoon is for is to brush the top of the pastry when you're done. So we're just gonna put that on the side, crank up the heat a bit so it's bubbling, and then we're gonna add in the remainder of that third of a cup of heavy cream. I'm also gonna add my final touch, cause yes, it's me, so we're gonna add a quarter teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes. If you like things just a tiny more spicy and exciting, go for more. But I feel like even just a hint makes everything so well balanced. You might have noticed I didn't add any black pepper to here. I think it's because I'm adding in the crushed red pepper flakes, but if you want to, you can add black pepper too. So when it comes to a boil, you'll see that roux is gonna activate and it's gonna start to thicken. So we're gonna go anywhere from about three to five minutes once again, and then you'll start to see this mixture thicken and meanwhile, the cauliflower will cook. And because my chicken is already cooked as well, I put that at the end. So when it's starting to come up to a little bit of a simmer or a bubble, I'll start folding in my cold rotisserie chicken. And once again, this was about one and a half cups. You can already see it getting a little thick, but that's what you're looking for. So it's not like a ton of cream. It's really just the roux and all of the chunky vegetables and chicken. Now an important step is that when it thickens, we're gonna transfer this to the pie plate and then we're gonna stick it into the fridge so that it can cool for about 10 minutes. You want to let it cool a little bit in the pie plate and then put it in your fridge uncovered for about 10 minutes, maybe pull it out halfway, stir it around to make sure that the filling is all cool. And the reason we do that is because we're gonna top it with the pie crust and we don't want it to be like pre-melted before it goes into the oven. But the cool part is that you can always make this pot pie in advance. Make the filling, keep it cool in the fridge, and when you're ready to bake it off, then pull it out, put the pie dough on top, and bake it off. Mmm. Oh, that's good. Woo! I forgot how good it is. <laughs> yes, for me personally, I like it a little bit more salt. So in my recipe, I would say anywhere between a half to three quarters teaspoon of kosher salt. Once again, I'm saying kosher salt because if you're using table salt, you will have to cut down the measurement because kosher salt is less salty than table salt. Oh, that's so good. I can taste the red pepper in the curry. You can see that I went ahead and put like a foil lined sheet pan underneath because I'm gonna pop it in the oven on this. Just because whenever pie cooks in the oven, you gotta make sure that it catches the drips. And foil is just for easy cleanup because I'm kind of lazy. You don't have to put this whole thing in the refrigerator like this. You can just put the pie plate in. Ooh, yeah. It looks like it's not gonna fit, but it will. <laughs> so it's best to have a kind of a deeper pan than I did. This is the only pie plate I own, isn't that funny? So once again, there's no crust on the bottom, but trust me, you really don't need it. I mean, it's not necessary. Let it cool for just a bit on the counter and then throw it in the fridge, take a 10 minute break, Mix it around a little bit so it's nice and cool, and then I'll meet you back on the counter to top it with the pie crust. So here it is, it's nicely cooled and congealed. It's not ice cold, it's still warm to the touch, but it's good enough. And then I got some refrigerated pie crust. If you wanna make your own homemade pie crust, go for it. Or if you have some left over in the freezer, go ahead and use that too. Just make sure that it's nicely thawed in the refrigerator. nicely thawed out and there shouldn't be a need to roll it out or anything. Just gonna transfer it and plop it over here. Should fit pretty exactly. And I'm just gonna use a fork to kind of help it adhere to the pie plate a little bit. So crimp it down just a tad. But again, it's not really sticking to anything, like it's not sticking to other dough. And you don't have to make sure that it's really stuck down. It's more just like a nice little crunchy topping. Then we're gonna cut a few small slits so that it can have some ventilation. 
You can do any design or any manner that you want. Just gonna go for about like six small little slits in a circle. So it kind of has a traditional pie look to it. So remember that remainder one tablespoon of heavy cream. You're gonna brush it along the top of the pie dough, but we're gonna avoid the edges because the edges tend to brown faster than the top anyway, so it doesn't need any help right there. And we're just gonna kind of evenly brush it on. Now, if you wanted to use egg yolk instead of reserving the heavy cream, that would be better. Like an egg wash is usually a little bit of egg yolk mixed with some water. That would probably give you the brownest crust. Just a little brushing like this. And look, I do have leftover heavy cream. I'm just gonna leave that there. I don't think there's a need to fully douse it because then it might get a little soggy and take a little longer to brown. I am anxiously waiting for my pie to be done. And here's the thing. So I stuck it in the oven at 400 degrees for now about 40 minutes. But here's something to realize. I actually realized when I was testing this that my oven was a little bit uncalibrated. And I know that by looking at an oven thermometer. So if you don't have an oven thermometer, I've mentioned it many times in several videos, it is so important. If you realize that when you're following a recipe, it's a little wonky and it's taking longer to cook than normal, check your internal temperature of your oven with an oven thermometer. They're really inexpensive. I'll leave a link down below in a description box of the one that I use. Hang it in there and see. Go by that temperature. So in order to boost it to be the proper 400 degrees, I had to actually jack up my oven to 425. So if you look at the actual digital number, it says 425. If you look at the dial on my oven thermometer, it says 400. You're gonna go anywhere between 30 to 40 minutes at 400. That seems like a huge range, right? But start checking it around the 25 mark because every oven is different. Moment of truth. I can see by the bubbling, dripping sides and the smell that it is hot inside. The flaky pastry is cooked. It's nice and firm and it is golden brown. So this is perfect for me. You're gonna let this cool for about 10 minutes without cutting into it, anywhere between five to 10 minutes. I know that's kind of hard because it smells so intoxicating. You're gonna do that so that it kind of has a chance to firm up a little bit and then you're gonna serve it. I honestly cannot wait any longer. It's only been cooling for a few minutes, but I gotta dive right in. A nice flaky, buttery crust. Ooh. Oh, I'm cutting myself a generous slice here, but I'm not lying when I said Joe and I polished this all off ourselves, but you know what? It's pretty light because there's only one layer of flaky crust, cauliflower in the inside, and just a minimal amount of cream. So you're gonna use a spoon because it's pretty much like a stew underneath it. Woohoo! <laughs> oh, that looks so good. I mean, what do you think, guys, right? Look at that steamy golden pie. Okay, you have to, you must eat the crust along with it. I feel like I'm being hugged from the inside out. It's everything you want in a comforting pot pie. Slightly lighter, slightly more spicy, a unique twist to the classic. Chicken is tender, veggies are absolutely cooked perfectly, and that flaky pie crust is everything. That flaky buttery touch is so good. I feel like I have to stop and give Joe a bite because it's just not fair. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's like one of those like good job Julie kind of recipes I mean I'm like that with all the recipes honestly but it's so good right delicious <laughs> so yummy you guys have to try it out yourself all the written recipes with the measurements and amounts are down below in the description box we leave a direct link to our blog chefjulian.com go there you can print it out for free look at some pictures and really enjoy this pie once again it's a little finicky with like how long you put it in and what temperature and all that kind of stuff but you got to use your cooking intuition which is why i also talk about that in our skillshare class okay because whenever you follow a recipe always use your intuition first this is exactly what you need on a cold fall or winter day 
It's perfect for using up leftover vegetables. You can use any scraps of vegetables that you want, fresh or frozen. Add your leftover chicken and turkey and call it a day. So I hope you enjoyed this video and if I didn't share it enough during this time, make sure that you leave a comment down below and push like because that really helps push up videos like these in the algorithm. And you know that's a huge help to us. That way we can come out with more of these delicious recipes for you. Make sure that you push subscribe and hit that bell to all notifications so that you know every time we post any video like this one. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.